Welcome to the UP Notable Books Club, brought to you by the Upper Peninsula Publisher and Authors Association. Ann Dolman has lifelong roots in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and more than two decades of teaching experience. Ann earned a BS Journalism education from the University of Wisconsin, Madison, and an MA in Secondary Ed, Reading, from Viterbo University. She started out as a newspaper reporter slash photographer, her first love, and returned to journalism after retiring from teaching. Anne loves delving into the story behind the story, whether it be of persons, places, or things. She continues to freelance for several publications while writing additional middle grade novels about her favorite character, 13-year-old Katie, and the challenges she faces and overcomes while solving mysteries. In addition to the honor of 2020 UP Notable Book, Katie and the Bear Necklace has garnered many awards, including Historical Society of Michigan 2020 State History Award, Books, Children, and Youth. Well, like I said, a very warm welcome to the Sidetracked with Reading Readers from Crystal Falls. The Crystal Falls Book Club is one of the Crystal Falls Book Clubs is joining us tonight. If you people could give a little wave. Well, okay, there we are. So um, welcome, and we hope you like what we're doing tonight, and you keep reading UP Notable Books with us. And like I mentioned before, in case you missed it, um, Michael's book is next month, Lake Superior Tales, a nice short book and um, highly recommended by one of my patrons. So I hope you all read it and enjoy it. And Michael is one of the, is not one of, he is the only author who's on both Okay. Lists of UP Notable Books. He's on year one and on year two. So, so pretty excited. All right. Before, um, if anybody else have any business before we get started? Okay. Well, I would like to take a moment <laughs> to introduce you all to Ann Dahlman. And I spelled her name wrong on some of the emails. So I apologize for that, Ann. I had D-A-H-L and it's D-A-L-L. But she wrote a wonderful book called Katie and the Bear Necklace. And I hope a lot of you had a chance to read it and, and you have some good questions and things that you wanna discuss with her. She also has a PowerPoint she's gonna be sharing with us in a little while. So without any further ado, let's put our hands together for Anne. Thank you, Evelyn. I wanna thank you for all your hard work and patience in setting this up. And also a big thank you to UPPAA and Victor for all of his hard work. It's just a wonderful organization. I can't say enough about it. Um, this is my first time doing a PowerPoint with Zoom. So I have my friend here, Gina Zanone, who actually said she knows Margaret. Oh, yes. <laughs> so she's my techie friend. So she's here. And I'm going to start with the PowerPoint. So please let me know if you can't see it. So I go to share a screen and then click on the PowerPoint. Click on the PowerPoint. Here. Now go share. Go share. Okay, um, public library presentation today, which is June 10th, 2021. Um, a little about myself. This is me in my office <laughs> and <laughs> Gina did this. And as you can see, I've given um, the UP reader a little plug here, an okay. older version, an older edition. Um, this was actually a book that was published in 2009 called Sam English, The Life, Times, and Works of an Artist. And uh, Sam is an Ojibwa, Chippewa artist, and it details the story of his life and his work in, um, Indian, uh, in the Indian movement. And in the recovery movement, he's the founder of um, Native American AA. Uh, and it's a beautiful art book, if I say so myself. It includes about 80 color prints of his work. Um, I don't know. I will show it. Once I get out of the PowerPoint, I'll hold up the cover. Um, and then here's my book, Caddy and the Bear Necklace by me. And the reason I brought this up is Sam's daughter, Haley, did the cover. Haley designed oh. this cover for me. Because one of the beautiful things I see in Native literature is it's all circular or in native culture, everything's circular. And I thought this was a nice way of, of keeping that circle going. This is a little side note here. Uh, Sam drew this cover of himself when he was 
in his uh, 70s as a young man. And inside there's the identical painting, only he painted himself as an old man. And then this is um, Haley's cover. And if you look closely at the cover, and I will hold that up later, um, Caddy in the picture has a face that shows various tones, various shades of yellow, orange, um, just different colors. And Haley said that was to show that she was in a state of transition emotionally. And she wanted the colors to flow to show how this young girl who was only 13, how her emotions were flowing. And I think if you have any um, acquaintanceship with teenagers and <laughs> I do after he, teaching 25 years and raising two sons, yeah, their emotions flow. Um, to start out with my career, Evelyn and I were talking earlier and I started out in the newsroom. I spent 10 years uh, at the Meredith Eagle Star, which is now the Meredith Eagle Herald, um, doing soft news. I've never been one for hard news. Um, and soft news is more feature writing, although I did get pulled into writing deer reports and bowling banquet write-ups and lots of things. But um, my degree is in journalism education from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And journalism has always been my, my big, big love. Um, after several years, about 10 years doing that, I switched to teaching starting out at Lincoln High School in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And I was there a few years. Then I went into corporate writing. And then uh, luckily I ended up in Hanneville. Um, where I realized that I'm just much happier teaching in a small school um, than a big class A school. I like getting to know the students. I like the familiarity of having them year after year. So that's a, a brief capsule of my career. Um, publications, um, the, two, the two books you see here, UP Reader, um, a number of magazines, I've had articles written and a number of them. I also wrote another book called The Hanneville Poets. Um, well, I should say I didn't really write it. I was the editor. I collected my students' writing over 10 years. And when I say collected, often I would find things crumpled up on the floor, thrown in the wastebasket. And yeah, and they were really, really good. And what impressed me was the variety of topics were so different from what I was accustomed to having seen at Manitowoc and where I subbed in other public schools. They wrote about um, the difficulties of walking in two worlds, which all played into Caddy and the struggles she's facing. They wrote about powwows and res cars and fry bread and then basketball, um, just some really unique topics. Um, most recently, I was editor of a local newspaper, not newspaper, a local um, feature magazine that covered Marinette Menominee and Peshtigo, and that was a monthly magazine. And I just really, really love magazine writing. Um, although I think writing about Caddy is probably my favorite thing right now. What's next? I just finished the next book, and I want to say the first draft, but I've already rewritten it three times. And Caddy, I rewrote eight. So <laughs> Evelyn said, when's it coming out? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Whenever I'm satisfied and then I'll send it on for editing and um, it's going to need some, I'm sure they'll pick it apart and find some things that need to be changed or redone. But I'm really excited about it. Um, the fun thing is when I'm writing about this young girl, I sit down in front of my computer and I feel as if she's writing the story. And it's, it's such a teenage thing because I don't want to do it. I don't want to sit down. I don't want to get to work. I just want to drink my coffee and watch TV or talk to my kids or go outside and look at the birds. And then I sit down and she's telling her story. And some days she has a lot to say and I might write for three hours. In other days, it's like, hey, 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe an hour, she's done. She's not going to write anymore. And um, it took a long time to get to that point, but it's, it's really fascinating. It's really something I enjoy a lot, just feeling like I'm this kid and I'm writing about what's going on in my life. Um, 
So it says, hi, welcome to my office. Feel free to look around. You will see some of the books I have authored. And uh, Gina, who's here with me tonight, did this. And I really like the fact that she's smiling while she's holding a book because uh, during the pandemic, that was the hardest thing for me was not being able to go to the library. It was just painful. And we have three wonderful libraries in this town, in this area. One in Menominee, Michigan, one across the river in Marinette, Wisconsin, and then our local university um, center in Marinette has a great library too. So it was just like sunshine and roses when the library opened up again. Okay, the next one. Okay, how I chose the cover. I told you a little bit about that. Um, and actually, Haley read the book and she, she designed the cover. And here you can see the changes in her face, the different colors. Um, yeah, young girls they go through, and boys go through a lot of changes at that age. And purple was one of her favorite colors. Here is the necklace, the actual bear necklace that she's wearing. And that belonged to Sam's mother or the cover artist's grandmother. And I think that's just kind of cool. When I um, was given that necklace, I would hold it in my hand and wonder, is there a story behind this? What is there about this? And ask about the who comes seeing it because I think if we play play the sli the slideshow, they can see it bigger. Can you see this? Can everyone see this? I can. Okay, you all can see it. Okay. Yep, we can see it. Okay, good. And then the bluebird, the blue jay. He's one of the uh, characters who uh, keeps her on the right path when she wants to stray. He's there, uh, either tapping at the window or making his sounds. I just really. Maybe it's the Irish in me. I love trees and I love, I love birds. And he click, click, clicks. Um, this is one of the awards I received. Um, this is the MIPA Award, Midwest Independent Publishers Association. And that was for um, 2020 in Young Adult. Um, I also received a Next Generation Indie Book Award. I was the finalist in that. Um, one that I'm very proud of and learned about through Victor, and I haven't received the, um, in the little stamps yet, is from the Historical Society of Michigan, their state history award in the youth books category. And that's really an honor. Um, the New Mexico, Arizona book award in multicultural category, uh, a five-star review from Reader's Favorite. And then a UP notable book, of course, that's another one that makes my heart happy. So um, there she is. And I took this photo with some rocks and trees and leaves because I like to emphasize nature and her um, reliance on nature. The story started when she was out running in the woods. Okay, next one. Okay, here we go. Here are some, um, some of the main uh, things I wrote about in the book. Uh, we'll start here with the bear necklace. And I hope you can all see this. It's, um, can everyone see it? Yeah, I can. Okay. Everyone I else? See it. It? Yes. yes. Okay, oh, great. It's a uh, white, it looks like ivory. I'm not sure what the stone is, but the eyes, there's little tiny turquoise beads for the eyes. And then these are white, tiny little like shell-like beads with bits of um, blue and green turquoise. So this is the necklace that she found and that is talked about, written about in the story that she finds hidden in the floor of her bedroom closet. And she wonders why she found it. And um, that starts the chain, that starts her questioning um, and finding out things related to the necklace. This is mom, the woman's knife where she is remembering back when she was a young girl and her grandmother was and her aunties were teaching her how to make pie. And this would be the obsidian blade. Um, there's a carved wooden handle and then um, the leather thongs that are used to tie the pieces together. And this is the sheath and it's all fringed. And then there's a slot here to slide it through your um, 
belt. That was given to me by my brother. He made this. Um, he's quite a talented craftsman. And this is a project he went through a few years ago. Um, here, a friend of mine gave me this. She painted. We have a lot of rock painters in Marinette Menominee. And she's one of those and did um, the blue jay in the book and put him on a rock because he really is. And he's very important in the second story too. He never leaves her. And then applesauce because she likes applesauce. Her grandma likes making applesauce. I write about applesauce. And when I am stressed and feeling, I don't know, sad, I make applesauce. It's just something I like to do. I just, it makes me happy to make it. it makes me happy to smell it in the, in the kitchen, all the cinnamon and, it just is a, a happy thing for me. And it's a happy thing for Caddy too. Um, let's see. She talks about beadwork and how she's very klutzy. She's quite a, good at sketching and she always carries a sketchbook with her in her notebook. Um, and beadwork is something she would like to learn to do. And this is just an example. It's a hair clip. It was a gift from a friend. And again, you can see it's the circular motif and all the lovely colors. And uh, I just included it because again, it makes me happy. I, I think it's beautiful and I think beadwork is beautiful and I appreciate the artistry. And it's something that, it's a smaller theme in the book how she struggles to do it and questions, why can't I do it? Why aren't I better at it? Um, Oh, we've talked about this. These are the awards that the book has received. And here I am. If anyone would like to um, contact me, I can be reached at shemackwriter at gmail.com, lakemichiganpen at gmail.com. And then um, I have a website, www.andalman.com. And this was at our local library, of course, at a book signing. And this is my very short presentation. And though I did have some questions for people here that I'd like you to think about, have you ever found something and wondered about its past? Because Caddy did, she found that knife and she wondered how come I'm the one to find it? How come it was, well, the necklace rather. And then the knife just, sorry, got carried away. She found the necklace and wondered, how come me? And there really was a reason. So I, I put that out to the audience right now. Have any of you ever found something and wondered about its past? I have. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good or bad, you know, it could be. It could well, be. considering a basically I'm a historian, just about everything I come across, I do wonder about its past. So. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. Um. What did you learn from reading this book that you didn't know before? Oh. Um. I didn't know about the jingle dancing. Yeah. The jingle dancers. I really liked that idea. Um, my friend Jean is here and we had a, a good friend who uh, passed over uh, a year and a half ago and she was a jingle dancer and she taught us a lot about it. And it's, um, it's a heavy load to be a jingle dancer. It's quite, um, quite a responsibility you take on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you know someone who reminds you of Caddy? Uh, and before you go on, can you talk a little bit about the eagle feather motif for those who haven't read the book? Okay. I'm not fascinated. That was, good. that was a good Oh, part. okay. Um, should I go out of the screen maybe? Yeah, you can do that. How stop can sharing. I do it? Go click on your... I'm just figuring this out. Where do I go? Right there. Go stop share. Stop share. Okay. Ah, oh, there you are. Now you're nice and big okay. again. Should I take these? No, you don't. It's fine. They're okay. Um, the story opens um, when Caddy's standing in, well, it opens at a running scene, but one day at school, and this is a small school, K to 12, um, 
fashioned after Hanneville, set in the mythical town of Barnesville, but about 20 miles out on a reservation. And she's standing in front of her locker and she notices an eagle feather that's been, um, that's tossed on the floor, that's laying there on the floor. And she's horrified because an eagle feather is sacred and you don't disrespect a sacred object in that way. Um, and it, I didn't really write about how it got there. Um, the implication would be somebody was carrying it or had it in their possession and dropped it and didn't even notice, which is really terrible. Um, she, just, she knows that something should be done with it. And so um, the other kids are in class. She walks to the office and tells the principal and he walks back with her and says, I will take care of this. Thank you for reporting it. You know, because it would be easy when the bell rang and kids were in the halls to stomp on it or step on it or, yeah. So the principal calls in an elder who um, does the ceremony to pick it up and restore it the way it should be to a place of honor. He'd probably be given to someone that would take care of it, like a pipe carrier. Yeah, he was um, a pipe carrier himself, and he would know what to do with it. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's just, in that culture, it would just be a shocking thing to see an eagle feather disrespected and laying on the ground like that. You know, if you found one outside, it, you might think it drifted down from an eagle, but to see it in a building... Oh, um, my friend here just told me that if an eagle feather drops during a powwow, it would fall from it from regalia. If it would fall off of um regalia, the um what dancers are wearing, that it means that a warrior has has passed. So it's terribly significant and terribly important. Yeah. They uh, in in the. Um... You know, in the reservation schools, do they still teach, uh, you know, the Indian traditions? Um, I'm not in a really position to speak for all schools. I was at Natawash Public School Academy slash Hanneville Indian School. I was there from 1994 to 2004, I think. I was there 15 years. And at that time they did, um, at that time during those years, and it was a K to 12 school, all students were required to take um, beading. They would start, the little guys would start with the big beads and they'd move up in size, or pardon me, they, um, they would move up in the um, intricacy of the patterns and the small size of beads as they got older. Um, and that was part of their culture class where they, would learn their different uh, cultural traditions. Um, and then they also were taught the Potawatomi language. Um, and we did start out every Monday morning with ceremonies in the gym, uh, storytelling, a number of uh, speakers and uh, presenters were brought in to do, oh, hoop dancing or, um, different presentations. And the kids, we go out walking, collect um, red willow for Kinnikinnick to make red willow bark. They collect sweet grass. Um, quite a bit, actually. Um, whether they do that today, I, I don't know if it's still going on. I know at that time, um, a lot of the grandmothers were around and wanted, it was very important that that was part of the curriculum. And that's why it was wonderful to teach there. And that's how I was privileged to learn as much as I did. Um, can't think of much else. Do you have any other questions? Um, I will say this book was very, uh, how can I say it? It, it? It's a slender book. It doesn't have a lot of pages, but it took a long time to write, I think. As I said before, I did eight revisions. I went to a um, couple of writing uh, camps. Highlights Foundation 
Highlights produces the wonderful Highlights magazine. I had scholarships to go there for two sessions during two different summers. I am um, where I learned about changing from a journalistic style of inverted pyramid to um, the narrative arc and building in, you know, a novel writing, how you have to have um, different things building up in intensity and then falling down and building in questions. Very different from, from journalism and just had some great help there. And then I received a scholarship to study with um, Susan Power in Minneapolis who wrote The Grass Dancer, which is a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. Um, she's Sue. Uh, and then, the, you know, you think, well, you write the first draft and you think it's wonderful and then you show it to somebody and they say, well, it's a good start. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're crushed and you cry and you mope and then you put yourself together and you rewrite it again and the same thing and then you rewrite it again and then you go to another editor, find an editor someone to work with and they say, it's a good second attempt. <laughs> and then you, you go over it and over it and over it. I sent out um, approximately a little more than 70 queries to agents and publishers. Wow. Yeah, and each time you have to be so careful to follow what the requirements are. You know, the form, and I'm talking in terms of format, how they want it sent in. Do they want the first 10 pages? Do they want the first three chapters? What do they want in their cover letter? Do they want a synopsis? Do they want an outline? Uh, do they want chapter headers? Do they, you know, because if you don't follow it, you're, you're going to end up in the slush pile. And you probably will anyway. But um, that took me a couple, probably two years of querying. And then through... Um, University of Wisconsin-Madison through their off-campus writing programs. I worked with the wonderful Christine DeSmit and she um, recommended me to uh, Henschel House Publishers. But it's really daunting because you think, you put your heart and soul into something you write and you think once it's written, you're done. <laughs> and you're not, yeah, you're laughing. Yeah, you're not, you're not. It's just, oh, and it's, boy, that is an eye-opening experience. You know, you're, um, then the marketing starts and the, the hustling and the selling and the constant um, promotion. And then COVID came <laughs> and that changed everything too. Well, I know we have some questions here. I saw a hand. So I think Deborah. Yeah, you mentioned that, uh, that some days she would write a lot for you and some days you know, she, your character didn't. So did you, you did then find that your character took over your brain and took over the project for you and started telling you what to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I heard a wonderful program on um, Wisconsin Public Radio a few weeks ago, just about that. And they're doing studies about that, how it happens, that your actual brain chemistry changes, which is kind of interesting, I think. Um, oh, why I forgot to mention why I wrote this book. Um, when I was up teaching, my students asked me to write a story about them. They said, you know, there's a lot of good things that happen up here. And they just wanted a story written about them and something they could read and something they could be proud of. And I wanted them to do it. And they said, well, we, you know, that old thing you teach by showing. So I said, okay. I'll do it. And I'm still waiting for them, but um, maybe, maybe someday. I have heard from them though. And that is the best reward, I guess you could say, that you could get, um, that anyone could get. And this is what one of them wrote. Um, her name's Faye. She said, I could not put it down. I read the last few chapters slow as possible past few days because I was sad it was almost in the end of the book. I hope you do end up writing more in the future. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one and I will share my review and story with others on my timeline and other social media. And that just, that just meant so much. And then another one of these former students said, um, this wouldn't be easy to write. 
but I read your interview you posted a couple days ago about how your kids in Indian lit class always felt disconnected from the stuff we read in class. I think you captured exactly what it was like. And then she mentioned some other, she mentioned some native authors and she said, those books are good, but it's not the same because they are completely different people with different traditions. There aren't many writers out there who write about Algonquin tribes and write it so the general person can understand it. Even when I try to explain it to people I work with or hang out with, I'm always like, it's hard to explain. Also, it was nice to actually see things from a teacher's perspective, someone outside, and see how they respect the way of life that a lot of people on the res take for granted. A lot of times I feel like people use um, the school as a stepping stone in their professional career. So then it feels like, well, you cared at the time and now we aren't good enough type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, she said, not saying that you did, but I guess what I mean is that you worked there for so long and observed how the kids were, their families and the elders and the ceremonies, and you got it and embraced it. I'm gonna cry. It shows how much you truly cared about us and reading it made me realize that the teachers did care about us back then. So those are the real rewards, I think, you know, helping to um, tell the story. Wow, yeah, that's really nice. Oh, it looks like I see a hand up with Carolyn. Um, I just wanted to mention, Anne, how you wrote so clearly that age group. I mean, it brought me back to when I was around that age. Um, a lot of memories, plus all the positive vibes that came from all the different things that came into her life. I, I've always told just about everybody I know, um, how it amazes me how, how people come into your life and how it changes your life. And sometimes just for a short time and sometimes for a long, you know, you know them for a long time, but how it changes you and changes your life. And just how moving to the res changed her, how um, finding the necklace, uh, the mystery she had to solve, and her grandma, her, um, the boy that she was close to, um, her family, how that all, everything kind of came around. And it was so interesting to see how you just wound it all together to me. Uh, it was just, there was, I never felt like I was lost in the book. I, I always just felt like it was moving forward. Um, Thank you. It was beautiful. Thank you. I I just love the relationship she has with her grandmother. Yeah. I'm gonna cry thinking about it because she's real to me. It's a, it's like a, talking about a real person. Yeah. You know, she was experiencing a lot of loss in her life. Her mother had disappeared, and her father had found love once again, but a much younger woman, and they'd moved across, you know, to a different state from Minnesota to Michigan. So she had, you know, new situation at home. Um, she adored her baby brother, but everything's, all these changes coming into her and her grandma was her anchor. Her grandma kept her balanced. And um, speaking of that, I do have a, a letter from a grandma and she wrote, it's a gift you have putting words on paper. I actually did read your sweet story on Saturday, the day I bought the gift, or the day I bought the book. It reminded me of those lovely times spent with my grandniece and nephew in summers when they were young, and I would read um, coyote stories to them. Uh, they loved it to me in the rug, such wry humor in that one. Your story also reminded me of my youth and visits with my own grandmother, who was French Canadian and Menominee. Sadly, I didn't learn of the Menominee part until long after she died. I would have loved a conversation about that. So um, I thought that was a beautiful letter too and very kind of her to take the time to write it and send it. Yeah. Any other questions out there? I'm sure there's some. Okay. She's, oh, she's, she's on mute. I'm not, I don't think Kay is on mute, but we can't hear you, Kay. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> sign language she can okay yeah i'm not sure well you could okay you can type it in the chat okay how do i find the chat here? Well, while the we're chat waiting for, for everybody is if you just look below if you put your cursor down it'll pop up chat and you can click on it and then you can type your question and i'll read it okay okay but mary had a question go ahead mary it's not a question really it's just um I think whatever the eight revisions were were sure worth it because what a beautiful, beautiful story. What a, what a, I mean, I couldn't put it down. It was just a delightful. And I, um, I, uh, my husband and I worked in Arizona on almost all the Indian reservations there. He was a school psychologist. So, you know, the natives are so dear to my heart and it was beautiful. Thank you. As a journalist, though, that's those revisions are painful because of the yeah. newsroom. You got to slam it out in a couple hours, if that. You know, I, I had an early morning deadline, so you'd have something going to work about six thirty-seven, and you had to have your whole oh. page made up by nine thirty. So, in one sense, it's a luxury. On the other hand, it's like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Rewrite it again. I can't take it anymore. I just got to ask. This is the question that's burning in my mind. The romance. You did a really good job with that oh, romance. Thank you. How, how did you do that? I mean, it wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It wasn't, you know, and, it, and it's kind of, you know, like I, one of the ladies in the group, she couldn't come tonight, but she said she wants to send the book to her granddaughter, but she's not sure the mother will like it because the girl's 13 and the boy was a little older. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that love part? Um, it's, I wanted to keep it more like a crush. Okay. Remember when you're a, you know, a young kid in middle school, junior high, and you have a crush on someone. And I, I didn't want to get into anything too um, overt, anything. Uh, Cause I, I hope that teachers will use this as a teaching tool. And I was a teacher and I have a little granddaughter <laughs> who I'm very protective of. And, but I know that kids get crushes and they fantasize and they dream and, you know, the littlest things mean something. So just the fact that he took her on a walk toward the end of the story and held the bush or the brush aside and showed her the little fawn and just sweet little things like that. And then, you know, she has an imagination that she'll blow it all up into something. And then her friend Irish will just say, oh, get over yourself, you know, <laughs> and just snap her bubble gum and say, you know, yeah, it's a teachable moment. Um, you can have a crush, but you don't have to. It doesn't have to go beyond that. Maybe some someday in the great someday, as she keeps saying, someday, maybe when they're older, maybe when they're, you know, college question. or adults. Janet. Yeah, I have a question for you, Anne. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, I hope that this is catching on regionally so that a lot of our local and, you know, regional libraries are aware of this. I'm wondering if you've been sending reviews to uh, more national um, review journals like School Library Journal or Booklist or some of the children's national, nationally reaching journals that would no. put a review of it in there. But I no, think it's a good candidate for it. Thank you for those suggestions. No, um, you know, COVID just kind of, uh, yeah, it slowed everything down and, mm -hmm. um, we had a death in the family and I just kind of was absent for a while, but wow. I, I'm back at it. So School Library Journal, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, School Library Journal. There's others too. Um, I'm sure you'll find lists of them at the public library. That you could, um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but book list is another one that's really, you know, library librarians depend on that for reviews. So well, sometimes, yeah. It's it's hard to get past the uh, gatekeepers. I'll say that, but. Mm. Well, you. I have hope for your book. Well, thank you. Uh, that, that's and I've read a lot of children's reviews. So I think, it, I think you should try. Okay, yeah. thank you. Another question here? Well, I, I had a question because um, it was, uh, this Katie was supposed to solve the mystery of the necklace. And it's sort of at the end, then she got together with her grandmother 
who was good friends with the um, boys, grandma. The boys grandma, but and and she got the earrings. But to me, like the she was still. I didn't know what the mystery was. If it was solved, or maybe is it oh. going to go on in another <laughs> book? Uh, the mystery was why uh, why she was chosen to find out this story. Yes. And through finding out the um, story behind the necklace, uh, she grew closer to her family. It was just part of her growing up process. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mysteries will continue to follow her because that's who she is now. And the bluebird tapping on her window is kind of a sign. Okay, there's another one. Remember, yeah. she's only 13, pushing 14, and she's growing up. And there's a lot of temptations on that road as you're growing up. And these kind of things keep her balance. You know, it makes her go to the library to do her research and um, to hang out with the elders to find things out from them and even to turn to her dad and well, ask well, him. Would it, would it lead into a sequel? Yeah, I just finished the second one. So, oh. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> yes, I know for me, um, the discussion questions that were in the book, the last one, number 15, what do you think will uh, be Katie's next adventure? I filled up an entire page. Oh my gosh. Things hey. that I, I wanted to know more about because I just got pulled into her world. You did such a great job with that. And I was just like, I need to know. I wanted to know why her dad didn't go through becoming a medicine man. And I wanted to know more about why her uncle Jack made the obsidian knife for her. And he, her mother, her absent mother, um, Katie has the cards, the birthday cards and Christmas cards in a box and she hasn't read them. And I'm like, well, she has to read them. What do they say? <laughs> <laughs> it's driving me crazy. She has a temper, this girl. That's part of her, um, her, I don't know, dilemma, part of her um, challenge is to channel that, that temper into, and that's one thing I wanted to do as a teacher was take the anger and the temper that a lot of kids had and channel it into a productive um, area. And for her, it's uh, sketching, running, and now it's going to be solving mysteries. But she does have anger with good reason. Why did her mother go? And that's the fun thing about um, fiction. You don't have to answer everything. You don't have to, you know, you can leave the reader wondering. Whereas in journalism, you have to present all the facts. So, but thank you for that. I'm, that's really exciting that you reacted that way. Um, can I ask you a question? Just, it's very short. So um, sure. how old is the uh, Katie you are starting your sequel with? What age? Is she, or have you not decided yet? Uh, it's just, um, that's something I have to finalize, but at this point, it's just a few months later. Oh. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have to work that out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So should I hold up the knife? Yeah, I was going to like to see that. Would you like to see, let's see, can you all see me? This yeah. Is Put it up in front of your camera. I got it. Where's my camera? Okay, like this. Okay, oh. you, you yeah. should be able to see it in your own picture. Yep. There you this go. is the actual knife, so it gives you an idea of the size. So remember, she was a little girl. She was only about six or seven. So this would be a pretty big knife for her at that age, for her little hand, and it's um, it's quite sharp. It's, it's got a. I don't know if you can see it, but it's ridged. But she really had a tough time with apples, so they gave her some softer peaches to slice. And then this was the case it was in. Wow. And then this is um, the actual, oh, we're going to get a reflection from the glass there. That's the actual um, painting that Haley Greenfeather English did for the cover. It's gorgeous. It's yeah. Thank you, because the publisher was kind of stunned at first. She was like, well, we've never done a cover like this. And I thought, well, <laughs> let's try it. Let's trust it. Um, and then I did refer earlier to the um, Sam English book. And here's that book. I don't know if I'm trying to get away from the glare. You can see this. 
And could, you, could you type the title on our, our chat so we could look it up maybe? Um, yeah. I could do that. Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. I can. I'll, I'll do that for you. Um, just the title was The Life and Works of... Life, Work, and Times of an Artist. Um, those books are no longer available uh, except from me right now. Oh, they're not in libraries? Um, they should be in libraries. We distributed that for a Kellogg grant to libraries throughout the country and to reservations throughout the country. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, and here... Yeah. This gives you an idea of some of his artwork. Oh, oh wow. Mm. And there are eight color plates. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, he was a major influence on me. He has been. Uh, here's another, another one you can kind of see. Mm -hmm. So, and then this was what started it all. This is the Hanneville Poets. And this one is out of print. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, out, of, out of print, but it has a uh, crazy writing, really nice, lovely writing in it. Crazy good. So. One thing um, I had to ask Anne earlier in, but probably before most of you came on was, to me, this is a nice book to give, um, you know, younger readers. If you have, like, I have a niece that's, you know, about this age and I wanted to buy her a copy and Anne said that you can buy them directly from her, that that's yep. one good way to buy them. Thank so you. I will share with everybody tomorrow her email again. Um, so everybody's got it if they'd like to purchase a, a copy or a few for gifts because it is I think it is a really neat book and it's like all the books we've been reading this year you know everyone is different from the other but this one is pretty pretty approachable in size and content and and it's it's mm -hmm. a nice it's a nice book oh here's the actual book with the cover and I referring back to what someone said before I think it was you Evelyn about the um, boy girl little crush I've had a number of women who have said to me they bought it for like you said a niece or a granddaughter or younger but they wanted to read it first and when they read it they said I didn't think I'd enjoy it <laughs> but, but it's fine and I'll pass it on to them mm -hmm. so it's PG I guess you'd say yeah yeah oh, good it was good do we have any follow-up questions? Anything else anybody would like to talk about? Okay, we've got one here from Les. Go ahead. I just wanted to say the, uh, you know, the Native American culture, there's a lot of stereotypes. And one of the things I really enjoyed about this book is uh, there's so much depth to that Indian culture that we don't know about. And I wish more people, you know, would write like you do and explain some of the ceremonies because I, I, what I think is happening is we're losing that culture. And um, I, I worry that it's not maybe going to be passed on. So many of these traditions will be lost. And I just think it's, uh, uh, you know, fascinating on what you put in the book. Most of them were things I had never uh, read before or heard of. And I just found that very interesting. I think you did a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, like I said, I wanted something my former students and even the current students would be proud to read. And that's what motivated me. And I, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted I to tell a story. What Les was saying, because when we talked to Phil Belfi, those of you who are with us for his presentation, that was the one takeaway I had from him, you know, really the, um, that it's a genocide, what has happened to Native Americans. And it, it, it was, you know, it's a good point that you make. And I think your book adds to the canon of Native American literature for sure. Well, Any you. other questions, comments? I have a small question. Um, the stepmom, Francine, mm -hmm. is, she, is she meant to be indigenous? Is she Native American? Um, because you know, the, the really... Twinkie cake threw me. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, my friend here, 
is here. We're laughing because that was kind of a joke in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, um, I never really said, and I just kind yeah, of, that was, yeah. it wasn't in there. It wasn't. Yeah. That's because it's not, it's left ambiguous, but um, that was kind of an inside joke about just people we worked with. And <laughs> sometimes those things creep in, you know, <laughs> So there really was a Twinkie cake somewhere? There really was in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> there really was. Amazing. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And I wanted to refer back to the question before yours about uh, the stories and the traditions. Uh, many of my students do walk the Native way and they are carrying on the traditions. And it's in a positive way, in a positive way which is wonderful to see. And um, and they're sharing it with their children. So yeah. things are being carried on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about this book for a 13 year old boy? Uh, I think he'd like it. Um, I spoke to a group of middle school students who were what, sixth grade? Sixth grade. Yeah. Sixth grade this past year. And the boys really got into it. They were, you know, they, boys pick out different, um, parts of a, a story than girls do, mm. you know, because boys tend to go for nonfiction, but they mm -hmm. like, um, oh, they just got into the, the bridge and the mm. water scenes and, you know, walking in the woods, but yeah, the guys liked it. Oh, good. Yeah, I, think, I think so. I want to send it to my grandson, so and he's oh, 13. <laughs> and boys like mysteries. They really do. I have a Two grown sons, and I'll tell you, the one wouldn't miss the mystery of Oak Island for anything. He's tuned into that every every Tuesday night. So, what was it that hmm. the kids didn't like about the, about the ending? They said you didn't end it. As um as the mother of a teenage boy, he's grown now. <laughs> um, I think it would be especially nice for a young man to read because um the love interest John Ray is so respectful, mm -hmm. and um. I think he's a good role model for mm. how to mm -hmm. behave around somebody you care about. If I had a daughter, I would want somebody like John Ray to, to be a crush because mm -hmm. the boundaries were very respected and um, the consideration. I thought he was a very good character. Thank you. That is just a compliment I will treasure. Thank you. That's how I raised my sons and that's how I hope my little baby granddaughter, what she looks for. So thank you very much. Well, as always, it's so nice to have, you know, people joining us. I know the weather's, you know, been kind of crazy and, and maybe people haven't, you know, they've been busy or other things going on. But I think we had a good turnout tonight. And and I I know I'm ready to read that next book, Anne. Yeah, well... I'm on revision two or three, so <laughs> <laughs> There's only I'll try to read up. <clears throat> if you I'll get down and you need moral support, you just call here at the library and I'll give you a pep talk. And All right, thank so you. We can hopefully thank have you. it for Christmas gifts because it's sure it, it, I want to read more and I think others do too. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You they know, Anne, I really enjoyed the introduction of the Ojibwe words in each chapter, and I tried to burn them into my memory, so I really want to see more of that. Okay, make which. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone. And Michael, are you ready for July? I'm a P. Yeah, probably as ready as I'll ever be. Good. I'll, I'll get a hold of you a little bit beforehand and make sure, you know, that we're all set. But this will be um, on Thursday, July. I got to just double check the date here. Um, yes, eighth, I believe. Eighth at six o'clock Central, seven o'clock Eastern. We'll be talking about Lake Superior Tales. You've been watching the UP Notable Books Club, brought to you by the Upper Peninsula Publisher and Authors Association. To join or for more information, please visit us at www.upa.org or www.upnotable.com.